here is ready to see some accountability in Ohio government? Good, then we're in the right place because that's what we're here for. Moments earlier, accountability now, Ohio submitted the signatures necessary for the Attorney General to look at the wording of our petition, of the petition to end qualified immunity. It is the first of many steps to make it so that people in government, when they infringe upon our rights, our lives, and our property, that they're held just as accountable as any of us would be if we did the same thing. We're here for the people that we want to stop from being victimized, but we're also here in the memory of the people whose names are on those records there, those broken records there. These are just a small handful of the people who have been killed at the hands of government in just the last few years. And the reason it's just a few of them is because they ran out of broken records. And they're actually looking for more broken records because there's that many people whose lives have been lost. And there are many more who thankfully survived their encounters, but their lives were ruined, or their dignity was robbed of them, or their money was robbed of them, or their lives were made worse because of people who knew that they could harm them and not be held accountable. And we're here now to put an end to that for good in Ohio. Folks, I'm, I'm not from Ohio, and, and there are people here that can tell you all of the heart-wrenching stories of people whose lives have been ruined because people in government are not being held accountable. But what I want to talk to you about is what qualified immunity does in creating a culture of unaccountability in law enforcement agencies and in government agencies. We just saw, thankfully, the successful conviction of Derek Chauvin who murdered George Floyd. And it's good that it happened, but it never needed to have gotten there. The reality... Yeah, we're trying to get it louder. Y'all ready to hear me be louder? So, oh, well, no, that's going to echo. Yeah, it's going to echo, yeah. yeah. Derek Chauvin, before he murdered George Floyd, had 17 other violent use of force complaints against him, including two wrongful death complaints. For all we know, he may have murdered two other people. And the problem was, when the Minneapolis Police Department, as the Columbus Police Department does, when they looked at Derek Chauvin, they made the same cost-benefit analysis that police departments and government agencies across the country make when they encounter the bad apples in their bunch realized that it would cost more to fight the police unions and the attorneys to get rid of Derek Chauvin than it would cost to just keep him on the force. Because thanks to qualified immunity, he can't be sued, they can't be sued, so it doesn't cost much to keep him on the force. So they just wait for him to eventually murder someone and then they can either throw him in jail or fire him and they don't have to deal with him anymore. That reality creates a culture of unaccountability in government that makes it so that police officers who do want to stop the bad apples know that nothing will happen if they try to stop them. That creates unaccountability. When we end qualified immunity, not only do we make them be held by the same standard that any of us would be held if we hurt people, but we also end that because now, when the Columbus Police Department, when the Minneapolis Police Department, when government agencies and police departments across the country encounter their Derek Chauvin's and their bad apples, now they have to get rid of them. If for no other reason than they don't want to be sued out of existence. That one simple change, actually being held accountable, forces them to end the policies that lead to abuse and misuse of force. And that's why we're here. Now, folks, there are many other people that are going to talk much more about why we need to end it, but I'm here to call on you, if you haven't already, to become a part of this movement. Like I said, this is the first of many steps. We submitted the signatures and the petition, the wording for this constitutional amendment to end qualified immunity, and we trust that the Attorney General will rule that the wording is constitutional. The next step after that is to get 440,000 signatures to get that referendum on the ballot, okay? Thank you, we got one, we got one right there. So we have to get 439,999 signatures to be able to get 
this on the ballot. And folks, as a member of the Libertarian Party who has to fight to get up, who has to fight to uh, to sign, get petitions signed all the time, you actually need twice that much because government's going to do everything they can to throw out as many of those signatures as they possibly can. So you need to get close to a million signatures. That is going to take volunteers. That is going to take people who will go out and get signatures signed. We got one right here again. That's going to take money to hire people to get signatures for this petition. It's going to take a lot of different things. And so I ask you now, if you haven't already, go to Accountability Now Ohio, sign up today. If you are able to make a donation, do so. If you are able to do volunteer, please do so. At the very least, share this with everyone that you know. Let people know that if they want the people in those ivory halls and in those police departments to be held just as accountable as the rest of us, if they want to see accountability among the people who claim to have authority over us, then they have to go to uh, Accountability Now Ohio today. Sign up, help however you can. Let's get some accountability in government today. Who's with us? Yeah.